So, in the last episode, we built ourselves a little bit of a bridge, built ourselves a spider on our spider web, and today I'm going to continue on with the actual castle and getting a little bit more of the bridge finalized. If you guys are liking these episodes, please leave a like, share it, and subscribe if you guys want some more. But without further ado, let's get into it. But before we really get into actually building up the castle today, we're going to have to start farming up some resources. And what is that resource, you might ask? Lapis. I'm going to need thousands of blocks of lapis in order to do the entire castle roof here. So what I've been doing is I've been basically cycling these guys right here, buying as much lapis as I possibly can, making it into blocks. And this is going to be my primary source for my roof. You may also ask, where do I get all my emeralds from? Well, that one's a little bit more tricky. So if we take a look at our stats here, you'll notice that I've got almost 1.5 million villager trades here. So there's a reason for that. Because what I do in order to get all my emeralds, since I don't have a raid farm, because those are super overpowered, is I basically just trade lots and lots and lots of iron blocks. I've traded them all with these guys right here. These are... What are these guys again? Uh, toolsmiths and weaponsmiths and stuff like that. It also helps like repair my tools. So I'll basically cycle these guys before I get into the actual trading of the lapis. And I know what you guys are thinking. Why didn't I cure my villagers? Well, there's a pretty easy answer for that. It's because I'm lazy. Mainly it's because I'm lazy. But in all honesty, honestly, it's because I made this... I made this whole build here mid game. I wasn't actually being lazy. I've got my villager breeder behind these walls. I just didn't really see a point of basically curing up all my villagers. At this point of the game, I would honestly rather get rid of my resources. And with three blocks of iron turned into emeralds, I can get this much lapis, which converts over to 48 lapis blocks, which honestly isn't too bad, especially when you have an iron farm in the spawn chunks like I do. So this is a Rayworks design right here, uh, the actual iron farm. So I know that the spawn chunks are actually going to be changing here, coming up here pretty soon. So I'm fully aware of that. Just so you guys know, I think I might actually just lose a module here, but this right here is basically the heart of where I get all my emeralds in the game. Right here, 350 per module. That gets me about 1200-ish an hour. And since I live stream this world every single day, over on Twitch for about uh, seven hours. I would say that's, uh, I, I would say we're never gonna have to worry about iron again. In the meantime of collecting up a bunch of iron so I could trade it with my villagers for more lapis, I'm also gonna need to start buying some more quartz. So basically, for those of you guys who don't know about this, because I get asked so frequently, maxed out masons will actually sell you full blocks of quartz and quartz pillars for those of you guys who don't know so basically i cycle these guys so i can buy up blocks of quartz then to put inside my super smelter and as you guys can see i've been collecting up smooth quartz for quite a while so we're just gonna throw this in here i go by the snowball method since i don't an afk in this world so a lot of my resources actually gather throughout the weeks before I take on a big project. But that should answer a few of your guys' questions on how I gather resources for mega builds like what we're taking on today. But without further ado, let's get into the actual building phase of this project. Okay. Back at the castle here, we're gonna start filling in a little bit of the walls and I think I found out exactly which block I would like to do. So thinking about keeping the whole castle very clean, very porcelain, because I plan to put many layers on this castle. So starting off with this guy right here, I think we're just going to start pinstriping the walls here and we're going to build up a little bit of a wall face that's all going to be made out of coarse pillars. So you guys can be able to see this from afar. Just trying to keep it very, very clean looking like that. But you can see there's like a slight change between that, you know? Uh, obviously, we're going to put implement windows and we're going to implement a bunch of other things and stuff like that as we go layering in color but that's exactly what we're going to be doing all right so we've gotten a little bit of the pillars on the bottom base here done up so they're all like whited out on the sides here we're going to put another layer in there but we also got ourselves a wandering trader here so let's see what the pick is for today uh my water got all scuffed up uh, i don't know what happened there anyways we got Squirtle Squad. We got Bidoof. 
Uh, we got this uh, end dragon woman. We got a ring-tailed slime. Robot. And a skull with mushrooms. For those of you guys who are ever wondering how I get micro blocks in the game, it's through this guy. The data pack, really cool. But yeah, let's go lay them out. Let's see what these guys look like. Squirtle Squad, made by one of my moderators. Mandolin. Looking slick. We also have Bidoof. For the, uh, for the Bidoof people out there. We got Ender. That's really cool head. What is that? What is that named again? Ender Dragon Woman. Kind of got that Doc M vibes. Uh, Robot. He's interested. Uh, we have ourselves the Ringtail Slime. <laughs> Don't know. And then we've got ourselves the Skull with Mushrooms growing out of it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's the new lineup for today. We'll see if we get any more Wandering Traders throughout the day. I'll keep you guys posted. Well, it's come to my attention that the water has basically wiped out every single torch. One small water spill turned into a massive flipping issue. So yeah, we're going to have a little bit of mobs in there. I wonder if we still have our torches down there. F. Okay, so now we cut off the water supply here. Hopefully, you know, third time's the charm on doing this. We should hopefully have all the water get corrected this time. And then we can re redo all the water here in a bit. But oh my gosh, dude. Minecraft water. Gotta love it. So now that we've actually done a little bit of the fill out here and we got the little bit of the line going across here, we started working on a little bit of the honeycomb pattern that's going to be built up around the walls of the actual castle, which I think are going to look awesome. Not sure if we're going to be going with glass or if we're going to go with honeycomb, but I think it's going to look awesome later on. So looking at it from back here, it kind of looks like a little bit of a lattice like laced wall, which I think definitely fits the vibe. Now that we got the lattice on both sides and the little bit of a honeycomb thing, we're going to start working on a little bit of the roof here. And then I want to kind of bring the honeycomb up and over the roof. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit more yellow, so I think it looks sick. And then, of course, as we start to build up our lapis, we're going to make a little bit of a stone platform so we can work it on up because I'm not crazy. I'm not made out of lapis here. This is going through an insane amount of lapis at this point. I'm going to try to curve it on over. And then we'll bring up all the uh, the gold and stuff like that too. Now that we got the roof on top of that, I'm going to try to carry this design up and over with the yellow terracotta, making it look a little bit more like honeycomb, but it's carried up to the top of the roof here to kind of break up the blue a little bit. We'll see how that works. I'm not 100% sure if it'll work well. So I only brought up the gold here just a little bit. I'm really liking the flow though. So flying on up here. Let's see if we can try to figure this out here. So a lot of this is on an angle. So I'm thinking like if this guy goes right here, it kind of looks connected in a way, but it's not at the same time. So it's kind of a little bit weird to kind of connect it all up. So I think if it comes up like this, these blocks will have to just come up like that in a way. Maybe we even bring these guys out and let's see what this thing looks like. Kind of, uh, kind of like a lattice in a way. We'll have to figure out the top portion of that because I'm not too fond in that. So let me see if I can potentially like kind of bring this out like this. How does this look? And there's a lot of mobs in here. I haven't lit this up yet. Exactly like that. So with looking at this, it kind of looks like it kind of like wraps up and around and kind of breaks up that blue there a little bit. But I've got some torches and we're going to get on the inside of this thing because it's probably pretty bad in here. So let me see if I can fly up in here. Yup, it's a little, yup, it's bad. Yup. All right, we're gonna have to fight our way through this. Hold on. F. Why do I light things up afterwards? Yeah, got a little bit of stone up there too. We got ourselves a decent pathway in here too. 
Not too bad, actually. And maybe we'll put, like, windows here and then the side, too. Break that up. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to carry on this design on the other side of the, uh, the blue now. All right, we're working on a little bit of the entrance here, and I think we got something really cool planned out. I'm going to redesign the top of these towers. Don't worry, those will change. Uh, but I'm absolutely loving the yellow glazed terracotta going all the way up. We got the doorway all done up, too. As we fly away, you'll even see that we even got both sides of the uh, castle done there. I still have a lot of towers to work in here and a lot of the roof to be done there, too. But... If I can get into a proper rhythm here, I think we can show you guys exactly how easy it is to place glazed terracotta. Um, that's just how easy it is. Just like that. You know what I mean? So every time, first try, coming around here, doing reverse circles. The other one took me uh, absolutely no time at all to put up because I don't struggle with uh, glazed terracotta in the slightest. So check it out. Look at it. All right, with those things done easily, we're gonna start working down the bridge right here, giving it a little bit more of a structure. So I'm just gonna kind of go in here and then kind of like pull down sections of the bridge to kind of give it a little bit of a shape here. So coming up here, I'm just gonna kind of take this and I'm gonna bring it down probably around three blocks, give or take. And we'll see. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, bring it around like three blocks, maybe two blocks. I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to take a look at this. Right, that's three blocks. Okay. And then we'll probably uh, pull this stuff together. Wait, did, is that too long? Oh no, we're chill, we're chill. Like that, creating a nice, like really cool arch. Like that. I think that kind of brings out a nice little cool like look there in the middle. Looks elegant. We'll map that out on the other side and then I'll even kind of like bring these down just a little bit more and we'll like kind of lace them together with quartz slabs basically. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go do that. E. Then I'm just going to bring this guy up one more block, kind of creating a really cool like look to this. See if I can hit every single one of these. That way I can have like maybe a potential wall that goes across here, maybe end rods or something. So we'll just kind of come up here. Doo, doo, doo. And now we've got a little bit of a bridge kind of in place between the two, but it almost looks like it's laced together, which I really like. Now we got to do the actual lacing bit. All right, with that all said and done, now that we got the bridge done, and we got ourselves a little bit of a pattern going on up there. And everything's a little bit more lit. We're going to be working on a couple other things. So what are those other things? I want to try working on a little bit of the glass for today. So we have a little bit of a checkerboard pattern there. But that's not backlit yet. But what I really wanted to show you guys was this sidewall here where we have a bunch of our honeycomb walls. We're going to be doing this. But not every single portion of the wall is going to be completely full. I'm going to make some of the honeycomb walls look like they're kind of like empty in a way because not all of them are going to be full of honey, right? And looking at it from way over here, I think it looks really, really cool if you look behind me there. But without further ado, we also got ourselves a wandering trader, which we're going to go check out the trades for the day. Okay, so I found them. So let's see what we got going on for today for wandering trader heads. Okay, we got ourselves a cat lantern. So that's really cool. We got ourselves this skeleton with brown mushrooms. And of course, I'm going to show you guys these a little bit more blown up here in the future. Uh, we got the golden apple gift. We have ourselves a new ascended head. This one is for Kazzy. So if you've ascended in the world, you get yourself your own personal head that only you can utilize. We have ghost face. We have Harley Quinn. And we have a golden apple. We can also buy these guys too if we wanted to, but I don't think we're going to get those. But let's check uh, let's check out what these guys are going to look like for today. So I'm going to lay them out right here for you guys. We have the Cat Lantern, which I think look absolutely amazing. We have Harley Quinn right here. I'll give you guys like a whole wraparound view of that. I think that's a really cool head. 
We have Ghost Face. We have a Golden Apple Gift. I'm pretty sure one of my moderators made that. Mandolin again. Massive thank you to you. Uh, we have ourselves the Golden Apple. If you guys know anything about that, those are my channel points over on Twitch. And we have ourselves the Skeleton Head with the brown mushrooms growing out of it. So not a bad selection for today, but let's get back into the build now. And I almost forgot, this is Kazzy's head right here. Not sure exactly what it is, but I think it looks awesome. Okay, so I got a couple of these uh, honeycomb patterns kind of uh, dug out right now. So we're going to get in here and we're going to show you guys exactly how I'm going to go about this. So I think there's a really cool way to go about it. So we're going to do our orange right next to our brown. So we're just going to go all the way up here. We're going to leave a space in right there. And we're going to work our way all the way around this thing just like that. And then now we're going to start filling in in with, um, with a little bit of the brown. Working our way around that. And then we'll just rinse and repeat. We'll put in the uh, the orange. And then it should leave me with like a, uh, a middle area here. Just like that. But it doesn't end there. Back here now, we got to put down our honeycomb and fill this up here a little bit. So we're just going to kind of come in here on the sides like this. And we'll just kind of completely backlight this or not backlight this but fill this in back here with the, all the honeycomb so we can get our really cool pattern and then we'll figure out what to do with the empty cells maybe we'll use some actual honey blocks or something like that for the other ones but that's how you do that and let me show you guys what this looks like on the other end now so now we have two of them so i'm going to continue on this pattern and we're going to go fill this thing up so we now have a little bit of the honeycomb pattern going over here. I've got the lamps as well. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like with shaders on because I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. But now to take that honeycomb pattern and do the exact same thing over here on the other side. But when it's nighttime, I'll show you guys what it looks like with shaders. All right, here it is. Now you guys can see a little bit of the glow of the warm honeycombs over here on the side with those lamps. As we work on this side, should give it a nice warm glow on this side. Old course. Nice warm glow on this side with a nice warm glow on this side. But I don't want to go too overboard with it. Don't mind the heart. Don't mind the air through my heart. But yeah, it's all coming together nicely. I'm going to figure out how to light up these towers next. I wasn't recording. F. Dude, I'm having a bad time right now. Now that we got the honeycomb walls built up on both sides of the build here, we can start focusing more on these towers right here where we're going to need a bunch of end rods to really bring out the towers and accentuate the lines that we got going on here. One problem. I don't have any more end rods. So we're going to have to go farm up some end rods. So we're going to go over to the blaze farm and do that. For those of you guys wondering how to build a end rods, swiping away at these blazes here will get us uh, the blaze rods. We take those blades rods, we take pop course fruit, and with those two items here, we're able to make ourselves a bunch of end rods. So I'm going to go pop some more coarse fruit, and then I'll be back here later on today so we can farm up even more blaze rods. But just for those of you guys who didn't know that, now you know. Okay, over here, I should have ourselves a little bit of a, whoop, coarse fruit farm over here. Let me just kind of get in here all gracefully and such. So this is a coarse fruit farm, so I can get myself a bunch of coarse fruit, throw it through the smelter. Let me check in here. Maybe I've got some. I actually got to weigh in and out. It's not It's not a pretty look back here, just FYI. Okay, so we don't have a whole lot of that, but what I do have are snowballs. Why? Well, snowballs are actually my ideal way of shooting these guys down. So we just pop away at these guys. And then we'll farm up all the coarse fruit and we'll throw it all into our super smelter. With that all said and done, I think we've got more than enough coarse flour fruit to put inside of our smelter. So we're just going to go pop that into the super smelter now. I definitely think that the end rods are going to look really good here. I'm also going to put them on the underside of the tower and I'm going to start doing up this side of the tower. But I got a little bit of something that I want to work out here. Oh, if I don't fall to my death. These, uh, these spots in particular i would like to kind of work these guys out so they have a little bit of a decorative pattern in the middle maybe we'll make these into actual flowers later on so 
I'm going to go on with the end rods now. I'm officially broke when it comes to end rods, so I'm going to have to be running that one back for a little while, but I think this looks incredible. We got a little bit of the bridge filled up here, but a little bit more of the elephant in the room is going to be filling out the actual castle itself. So I got to figure a way out on how to do that. So I'm thinking a combination between the stairs and also the slabs could make a very airy looking build here. So let's check in, let's check this out. So placing the stairs like this, creating the wall along the pillar, goes all the way up. And then we'll take a step back and we'll see what this looks like. But I think this would actually work really well with what we're gonna be going with here. Cause I could place blocks behind those stairs so we're going to play around with this a little bit and I'm going to see what uh what we can come up with here. So for the side here, we're going to be going with a combination of the yellow terracotta with the brown terracotta going all the way up. I think that looks really nice. You can kind of see it a little bit from the distance, but it's very subtle and it's a nice way to take up that little bit of a space in there. We'll see if we even carry that on over because I got other plants up there. There you have it. Got a little bit more of the front facade done here. So we got the entire middle portion of the wall kind of completed. Give you guys a little bit of a closer look of this. So I did a little bit of an alternating pinstripe pattern right here with the uh, the chiseled and the um, pillars. Worked in a little bit of a B stripe down there. And then on the side of these pillars, I started working in a little bit more honeycomb and then honey going up towards the top to kind of bring in a little bit of a different color. As you can see, the honey is a little bit lighter than the honeycomb. So it kind of gives it like a, almost like a natural gradient. But obviously we're going to be building some stuff right here in the middle as a little bit of a focal point. We're going to have to work out how we want to do our door frame and work out these sideways pillars and work out the, uh, the door right here. But I think we're going to have to leave that one for the next episode because that's all the time that we have for today. So I'll see you guys in the next one.